Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So you can share your screen, no? Okay. Can you see that? Yes, I can see that. And uh, okay. let me see if people have joined. Uh, yeah, we have people that have joined already, so I think we should start so that we can just um, finish on time. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name yeah. is Jubril. Um, ignore the name appearing on my screen. Emmanuel Oladeji is the name of the um executive that i used to set up the events so today we'll be having a 30 minute session on management of um ankle fractures by mr mina for it's an orthopedic registrar in the royal shrewsbury hospital and without taking much of our time i'll hand over to mina now to start the presentation thank you okay thank you so, hi all, my name is Mina Seifu. I'm working as a trauma and orthopedic surgery registrar at the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital. So we're gonna talk today about the emergency management of ankle fractures. So objective that we are gonna talk about today is the etiology of the acute ankle fractures to explain how to evaluate for an acute ankle fracture and explain the treatment options for an acute ankle fractures. So ankle fractures are very common injuries that could result from a trivial twisting injury in old frail patients up to a high energy trauma in young population. Treatment of these fractures is mainly aimed to restore the joint stability and alignment. This is to reduce the risk of post-traumatic ankle arthritis. So ankle joint is a hinge synovial joint that moves in one plane to, to produce dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. It's formed by the articulation between three bones, distal tibia, distal fibula, and the talus bone. Distal tibia and fibula, articular portions together, form the ankle mortis, which, cont which contains the body of the talus bone, as you can see on the picture. So the ankle joint entires three malleoli, the lateral malleolus, which is the distal end of the fibula, the medial malleolus, which is the medial lower end of the tibia, and the posterior malleolus. Ankle joint stability is provided by the ankle mortis articulation with the talus body, the ankle syndesmosis, and the ligaments and the muscles around the ankle joint. The ankle syndesmosis is a fibrous joint connecting the distal tibia and fibula. Syndesmosis is formed by three main parts, the interosseous tibiofibular ligament, the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament, and the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. There is a deltoid ligament which originates from the medial malus and attached to the stalus, navicular, and calcaneus bones, which stabilizes the ankle joint against over-eversion. On the lateral side, there is a lateral ligament complex, which consists of three ligaments originating from the lateral malus and attached to the talus, forming the anterior and posterior talofibular ligaments, and also attached to the calcaneus, forming the calcaneofibular ligament. The lateral ligament complex resists the ankle from over-inversion. The ankle joint is innervated by the articular branches from the tibial nerve, superficial and deep nerve, and its blood supply comes from the peroneal, anterior tibial, and posterior tibial arteries. Etiology. So the ankle fractures can be caused by various methods of trauma, like twisting injury, impact injury, and crush injuries. Falling, tripping, or sports activity may cause twisting forces through the ankle. Impact injuries may result from falling from a height with impaction of the distal tibia and fibula against the talus bone. And also the ankle crush injuries may be caused by a road traffic accident or crashing the ankle underneath a heavy object. Degree of pony comminution and the soft tissue damage is, damage is directly related to the energy of trauma. About 187 per 
100,000 adults sustain ankle fractures every year. The highest incidence in the female population is between 75 and 80 years of 84 years of age, compared to 15 to 24 years old for males. Isolated unimalar fractures are the most common type and account for 70% of yearly incident of all ankle fractures. About 20% of ankle fractures are pi-malar fractures, while the tri-malar fractures represent about 7% of all ankle fractures. There is also open ankle fractures, which the incident is about 2% of all ankle fractures. The path of physiology of ankle fractures, so the ankle joint, pony, and ligamentous structures form a complete ring. Whenever the ring is broken, it happens in two places. So based on the evaluation of ankle fracture, a full assessment of the whole ankle ring is necessary to avoid missing any pony or ligamentous injury. There are different systems have been developed to classify the ankle fractures. So classification of ankle fractures. So you can also classify the ankle fracture according to anatomical classification, Dennis Weber classification, and the log Hansen classification. In the anatomical classification, we classify the ankle fracture depending on the anatomical location into isolated lateral malus fracture, isolated medial malus fracture, or pi-malar ankle fracture, with, uh, where the two maluli are fractures, both medial and lateral maluli. Less commonly might be the posterior and lateral maluli. And the last classification of the ankle uh, fracture, anatomical classification, is the tri ankle fracture, where the three ankle maluli are broken, medial and lateral and posterior maluli. Second classification system for the ankle fracture is the Dennis Weber classification. This system categorizes the ankle fracture based on the distal fibular fracture line localization relative to the ankle syndesmosis into three types, A, B, and C. In Weber A classification, the distal fibular fracture is below the level of the syndesmosis. This type of fracture is usually stable and can be treated conservatively. Weber P. Here, the distal fibular fracture is located at the same level of the syndesmosis. Injury of this type could be treated conservatively if it is a stable injury. I, I mean, no deltoid ligament injury or syndesmotic disruption. Unstable Weber P fracture requires surgical fixation. The third type is Weber T fracture, uh, where the fibular fracture is located above the level of the syndesmosis. This type of fracture is usually unstable and requires surgical fixation. The other classification system is the log Hansen classification. Log Hansen classification, it depends on the foot position and the direction of force causing the injury. This classification categorizes the ankle fracture into four types. The first word of each type describes the foot position at the time of the injury, and the second word describes the movement of the talus and ankle mortis relative to the tibia. So when the foot is pronated, the medial ligaments are stretched and prone to injury while when the foot is supinated, the lateral ligaments are stretched and prone to injury. The so first type is supination adduction, where there is a distal fibula transverse fracture and there is a medial malus vertical fracture. Second type, which is the most common type of ankle injury, is a supination external rotation, where the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament is injured and there is a spiral or oblique fracture of the distal fibula and there is also posterior inferior tibia fibular ligament injury or posterior malleus avulsion fracture and there is avulsion uh, sorry and there is fracture of the medial malleus or deltoid ligament injury third type is pronation abduction injury where there is a fracture of the medial malleus or deltoid ligament injury there is an anterior inferior tibia fibular ligament injury there is a comminuted or transverse fibular fracture proximal to the tibial plafond fourth type is pronation external rotation where there is a fracture of the medial malus or deltoid ligament injury, there is an anterior inferior tibial fibular ligament injury, and there is a spiral or oblique fracture of the fibula proximal to the tibial plafond, and there is also a posterior inferior tibial fibular ligament injury or posterior malus avulsion fracture. There are also other types of ankle fractures, like a Mesinov type injury, pillon fracture, and Pothworth fracture dislocation. Mesonov type injury, there is an, it is an unstable ankle injury caused by pronation external rotation. It combines a proximal fibular fracture with a tibial fibular syndesmosis and deltoid ligament injury with or without medial malus fracture. 
this unstable injury always requires operative intervention. Pillon fracture. Pillon fracture is a comminuted fracture of the tibial plafond, which is the distal end of the tibia, including the articular surface. Pillon fracture usually results from high energy axial loading trauma, like fall from a high distance, causing impaction of the talus against the tibial plafond. Another type of ankle fracture is a post fracture dislocation. This is a very rare type of ankle fracture dislocation where the fibula is posteriorly dislocated and the posterior tibial border blocks the fibula reduction. So that's why operative treatment is required to reduce and fix the fibula in the incisura fibularis. So this type of fracture is usually very difficult to be reduced by the closed measure and almost always needs an, an open reduction in theater. History taking. So when you evaluate the ankle fracture, so history is an integral part of any medical evaluation. So as a clinician, we need to obtain a full history to cover all the following. Medical background, comorbidities including diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, peripheral neuropathy, inflammatory joint disease, obesity, kidney disease, all affect the prognosis of ankle fractures. So uncontrolled diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, and peripheral neuropathy disorders affect the fracture and the surgical wound healing and increase the risk of charcoal joint. So if indicated, all medical and systemic diseases should be addressed and optimized before surgery. Social history. So the patient baseline and goals should be established through the social history, including the patient level of mobility, pre-injury, the home situation, regular activities, as well as their future functional goals. Smoking and alcohol overuse can complicate the wound and fracture healing as well. History of injury. So it's important to identify the mechanism of injury to understand the nature and severity of the injury. High energy mechanism should raise the suspicion of compartment syndrome of the leg or more grave injuries such as pillow fracture, which result from axial loading. Ankle position at the time of the injury and subsequent direction of force generally dictates the fracture pattern as described by the Hansen classification system. In history taking also, we have to assess the venous thrombin polyc risk because this should be completed for all patients who sustain ankle fracture to identify the potential risk factors to develop DVT. Risk factors include, but also non unlimited to, smoking, previous DVT, family history of DVT, high PMI, hormonal therapy, and oral contraceptive pills. Patients who are at high risk of VTE should receive the appropriate prophylaxis treatment. So in evaluation of ankle fracture, there is the clinical assessment, there is Ottawa anchor rules and imaging modalities. In clinical assessment, so first, we all trauma patients should be assessed according to the ATLS principles. So ATLS survey should be completed in order from A to E to rule out any immediate life-threatening injury. A is the airway management and cervical spine stabilization. B is bracing circulation and hemorrhage control. D is this ability to assess the neurological status and E exposure. <clears throat> In clinical assessment, the second is neurovascular assessment. So a documented neurovascular assessment is mandatory to be performed before and after any attempt for ankle manipulation. Neurovascular assessment includes the color and temperature of the foot. Pale cold foot indicates a critical vascular compromise. So dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial pulses should be assessed and compared to the contralateral side. If there is any clinical concern for vascular compromise or skin tinting, urgent ankle reduction should be attempted immediately in an attempt to regain the vascular flow, followed by the neurovascular assessment. Hand doubler is a quick and non-invasive invasive method which can be used to assess the vascular flow in the foot. Neurological assessment should include the motor and sensory function of the deep peroneal nerve, superficial peroneal nerve, tibial nerve, sura nerve, and medial and lateral plantar nerve. Soft tissue assessment. So threatened skin of a deformed ankle necessitate an urgent ankle reduction and splinting to reduce the soft tissue stretching. Soft tissue integrity and the degree of the ankle swelling affect the treatment choice and the timing for surgical fixation. And lastly, examination of the proximal fibula. So examination of the proximal fibula and the knee joint is required to avoid missing any higher injury as in missing off type fracture injury. <coughs> Ottawa anchor rule. So when we ask for radiographs, so anchor radiograph should be requested if there is pain or tenderness on either malleolus and one of the following, whether tenderness of the bone at the posterior edge of the or the tip 
of either the lateral or medial myelus. Second thing, if the patient is unable to pair weight at the time of injury and on arrival to the emergency department, weight pairing is determined by the patient's ability to take four steps. Imaging modalities. So when we uh, are planning to image the ankle fracture dislocation or suspected ankle fracture, we have a plain radiograph, CT scan, and MRI scans. So X-ray are the first line of investigation to assess the ankle injury. Obtaining X-ray shouldn't delay the urgent reduction of the clinically obvious deformed ankle. Recommended X-ray views to assess the ankle injury include anteroposterior view, lateral view, and mortis view. In the anteroposterior ankle view, we assess for soft tissue swelling that may lead to discovery of other more subtle fractures. Lateral view, in which we assess the posterior malus tailor dome in relative to the distal mortis. For example, if it is located anteriorly or posteriorly. Mortis view is important to assess the ankle mortis, which combines the tibial plafond, medial malus, lateral malus, and the tailor dome. Mortis view is an anteroposterior ankle x ray with a internally rotated 15 to 20 degree and the ankle is dorsiflexed. This view evaluates the tailless position and the syndesmosis widening. In the normal ankle, this shows a uniform width of the space through the mortis joint space. There are also other views, but they are rarely uh, required in the emergency department. Sometimes we can require them in the full of fracture clinic like the weight-bearing view, external rotation, stress view, they all indicated to assess the fracture stability and to rule out any element and syndesmotic injury. We also need to obtain a full tibia and fibula lens x-rays to rule out any proximal fibula fracture, like in missing of type injury. CT scan. CT scan is usually useful to assess the articular surface, fracture configuration, and to, degree, and to assess the degree of the pony comminution. CT scan is usually organized for operative planning in complex ankle fracture. It's also useful to assess the posterior malus fractures. We rarely require MRI scan of the ankle in, in, uh, in treatment of ankle fracture dislocation, but the MRI scan is also valuable to assess the ligamentous injury like the deltoid ligament sprain, lateral ligament complex sprain, syndesmotic disruption, contral lesion, and stress fractures. Treatment. So the ankle fracture treatment aims to restore and stabilize the ankle mortis, which could be achieved by conservative measures if the ankle fracture is stable or surgical fixation if the ankle fracture is stable. Non-operative treatment. So indications of non-operative treatment include stable ankle fractures, like isolated unimalar ankle fracture with no tailor shift on the weight-bearing ankle x-ray. Second indication, if the patient is unfit for surgery or he is refusing surgery, Third indication, poor soft tissue condition, which doesn't allow for surgical intervention. Methods of non-operative treatment of ankle fracture include pilonia cast, walking boots, and proper analgesia. Operative treatment. So operative treatment, whether we can do an open reduction internal fixation or spanning external fixator. In the open reduction external fixation, so urgent open reduction of the ankle fracture dislocation, may be required if closed reduction attempts have failed or there is a neurovascular deficit. Ankle fracture orif is usually indicated for patient with unstable ankle mortex, with unstable ankle mortis who are fit for surgery and have a good soft tissue condition. Surgical fixation is usually performed either in the first 24 hours or after a few days. This is to allow soft tissue swelling to subside to reduce the risk of phone dehiscence. The ankle syndesmosis should be assessed intraoperatively by whether performing the hook test or by obtaining an intraoperative stress external rotation views. The other method of operative treatment for ankle fracture dislocation is the spanning external fixator. This is usually indicated as a temporary fixation method for unstable ankle fractures in case of severe soft tissue swelling or open fractures. Application of external fixator will hold the ankle mortis in the safe position, allowing the soft tissues to heal and settle. Then the ankle fracture open reduction and fixation can be done in a second stage surgery when the soft tissue is ready and can be closed safely. On application of the external fixation, the planning for surgical fixation should be considered, so the pins should be inserted away from the site of surgical approach for ankle orif. 
Complications following ankle fractures can occur after both conservative measures and operative measures. Complications of, in, of non-operative measures include ankle stiffness, ankle arthritic changes, delayed return to functional activity, ankle chronic instability, fracture malunion, non-union and delayed union, skin ulceration due to cost pressure, especially in diabetic patient, ankle mortex re-dislocation and requirement for further ankle manipulation, DVT and pulmonary embolism. Complications for the operative management of ankle fracture include infection, painful scar, metal work failure like broken plate and loose screws, wound dehiscence, nerve damage, vascular damage, fracture delayed union and non-union, prominent screws and malpositioned metal work like screw protrusion into the joint. Another complication of ankle fracture seen in people with diabetes is charcot arthropathy, which is known also as neuropathic arthropathy. This condition occurs when there is a progressive degeneration of the ankle joint, which leads to destruction of the bone, increased bone resorption, which ultimately leads to deformity. Long-term complication of charcot arthropathy may lead to ulceration, infection, or eventual amputation. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. That was a very um, um, extensive um, dealing with the topic. And is there any question from anyone? You can type in your question in the chat. We just give about five minutes for people to give questions. Yeah. I'm guessing either you have successfully confused everyone or you, everyone is um, satisfied with your... Okay, <laughs> I, I hope everyone is satisfied. Just the management of ankle fracture is a, the big topic. I try to be concise just to win for all of us when you see a patient suspecting ankle fracture. So since coming to the emergency department, just you need to be aware about what is what is the ankle joint and how to assess for ankle fracture and one how to proceed forward from this yeah all right i think it was very concise and straight to the point and it was very extensive i think basically that's all you need to stabilize an ankle fracture before a patient is taken to surgery yeah. that's correct so uh, yeah there's a question about if there's any difference in keeping the ankle in neutral position or plantar yeah. flexed for conservative management Fine. So usually we try to keep the ankle in plantar in a neutral position, which is the best functional position for for the ankle. And usually it leaves it gives the patient uh, the best outcome in preventing ankle stiffness and equinus uh, contractures. So you don't need to put the ankle in plantar flexion unless there is a suspicion of tendo Achilles injury or a calcaneus fracture. Uh, but otherwise, you need to put the ankle in neutral position. Otherwise. If you put the patient in slightly uh, blunter flexion, this will lead to uh, unstable ankle and usually ankle stiffness later on and equinus contraction. All right. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, my own question is about the different oper um, operative fixation. We can put a frame on and we can do an yes. orif. Yes. If we put on a frame, for how long do we keep it on? Until the point. So if the bone has healed, why do we still need an ORIF later on? You said we have to put the pins in yeah, there, the position there, to avoid ORIF. Yeah, there, there, are, there are two types of external fixation. So the, the unilateral external fixation is a temporary fixation that you can put it quickly in the emergency settings to allow for the soft tissues to heal. But this is a temporary type of fixation. So that's why you cannot depend on the external fixation for, for adequate uh, reduction fixation of the ankle joint. Okay. The frame is some sort of definitive external fixation because it has, it is not a uni, it's, it's not a unilateral fixation, it's a multi planar fixation. So okay. you can depend on this one as a definitive method of fixation. Uh, so you don't need a second stage if you put the frame, uh, but you need, okay. usually need a second stage if you put the unilateral fixator. All right. Okay. And, um, for just um, ligamentous injury, mm -hmm. when it's just the um, tibiofibular ligament that is 
damage. I think sometimes we just put some screws. When when do we make that decision? Yeah, so if th this is again, when you assess the ankle in the mortis view, if there's a syndesmotic disruption without medial or lateral, without medial or lateral malus fracture, so this means it is unstable injury because the ankle syndesmosis is disrupted and is injured. So you just need to fix the ankle syndesmosis. So you don't fix the lateral or medial malus because they are not broken, but you need to fix the syndesmosis, which is the uh, ligaments between the distal tibia and fibula. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any other question. And the good thing is people can always, um, this um, session is recorded. So okay. over time, people can always come and check the um, session again. Mm -hmm. So I think at this stage, I will be rounding up. And thank you very much, Mina, for your time. Oops, yeah, thank you everyone for attending. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye.